Let's move on to the first problem. So it says a seemingly unrelated analysis problem. Given an instance of this new Olympic scheduling problem, imagine generating a new instance with the same events, except that each event's start and finish times have been scaled by a single common constant c greater than zero. So if event i originally started, you know what, let's, let's sketch this. Uh, so we're going to have this event here, starts at 1, ends at 3, and we'll have a little out of space here, but I'll just make another one. This event here starts at 2, ends at 5, and this event starts at 5, ends at 7. And what are their values? Uh, 1, 4, and 2. <clears throat> okay, so if event i originally started at SI and finished at FI. It now starts at C times SI and finishes at C times FI. So if we were to scale by like 5, then this would become 5, this would become 15, this would become 10, 25, 25, and 35. Which doesn't really make a lot of difference. I mean, 10 is still between 5 and 15. You know, effectively, I can draw these exactly the same and just imagine that the scale has shrunk. The scale has gotten smaller. Uh, okay. The new instance is also an instance of the new Olympic scheduling problem. Right, because we'll still have potentially start and finish times that overlap, but otherwise everything matches uh, with the Olympic scheduling problem. Oh, but um, hmm. if C is not an integer, then this will scale up to a non-integer amount. Like if we multiply by 2.5, 1 times 2.5 will give us 2.5, which is not an integer. Uh, I mean, I guess that's not always true, but it can be true. So let's just assume, assume c is, it's greater than 0, so a positive integer. We don't have to assume it's positive, we're given that it's positive, but we're going to assume it's an integer, because otherwise we wouldn't actually get a new Olympic scheduling problem. Okay, now sketch the key insights of a brief proof that if the set S of events is an optimal solution to the original instance, S with its start and finish time scaled by C, so the, the same set of events but projected into the new instance, is also an optimal solution to the new instance. Um, well, that makes sense. We said that we were just scaling the events. We were just changing the horizontal scale effectively. That doesn't change which events conflict with each other or how valuable they are. Um, so the same solution should still be optimal. Like here, for our little instance, this plus this is an optimal solution. We obviously want 4. It's the highest valued event. It conflicts with this event, so we can't have that one. It does not, because they have the same start and finish time, conflict with this event. So the conflicts stay the same, the values stay the same, which means the solution stays the same. So let's just write that out. Conflicts stay the same. So the conflicts stay the same. In other words, uh, I and J events, I and J conflict. And you know what? Let's give a name to this so I can. Uh, so here's the original instance. The original instance I'm going to call I. And the new instance I'm going to call I prime. So conflicts do the same. Events I and J conflict in I, if and only if they conflict in I prime. Why? Because. Well, what does it mean for two events to conflict? Uh, it means, uh, again, let's, let's look at these two. We've, we've worked through this before. It means that the finish time of one event is after the start time of the other, and the start time of that one event is before the finish time of the other. And let's just make sure this, so these can't conflict. The finish time, the start time of this one is less than or equal to the finish time of this one finish time is greater than the start time of this one, but I think we're going to want the start time to be less than the finish time rather than less than or equal to, so that they're actually overlapping, uh, which means the other one can also be greater than. They can both be inequalities. That should work just fine. 
because if SI, no, actually, what I'm going to say is I'm just going to set up this, this relationship. So SI is greater than, oh, sorry. So the start time of i is less than the finish time of j. So we actually want less than the finish time of j. And the finish time of i is greater than the start time of j. Uh, if and only if c times si is less than c times fj and c times fi is greater than c times sj. And I'm just going to say because c is greater than 0. There's nothing super exciting going on here. We just multiplied each side of an inequality by a positive constant, and that's not going to change the inequalities. So any time that these two things are true, these two things are true. And any time that these two things are true, these two things are true. And that establishes this if and only if relationship, which means the conflicts stay the same. So the conflicts stay the same. The values clearly stay the same. There's nothing more to say there. We just didn't change the values. Uh, and therefore, the solution stays the same. So those are the key points of a proof. That's not a complete proof, but that's what really matters.